Hey guys, welcome to the RDR Celebrity Show powered by Solution Center. My name is Robbie Durant and uh, this is the hottest show that we are bringing out of Zimbabwe when it comes to celebrities, uh, making sure that we also give back to those people that have uh, performed in many sports as, as well as fields in acting, actresses, what you name it, we've got it on the show. Reminder, follow us on our YouTube channel, the RDR Celebrity Show, as well as all on our social media as well. The man next to me I want to introduce, Dirk Fillion. Uh, he is the current GM of Zimbabwe Cricket. Uh, Dirk, welcome to the show. Thanks, Robbie. Good. Thanks. Nice for Lovely to have you. Thank you. Lovely Thank you. to have you. Right. Uh, it's all been cricket for Dirk. Um, from when he started, uh, he was a, a Zimbabwe player. Listen to these stats. Played 53 one-day internationals, uh, two test matches as well. He was the highest test score of 38, which he achieved. His highest test score for one-day internationals was 63. Uh, his test debut versus Pakistan in 1998. That was a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, his uh, debut versus Sri Lanka. Uh, that was the one-day international in 1997. Were you born then? Uh, I was about I was about thirteen, I think. Thirteen, <laughs> thirteen. But uh, yeah, no, all good. No, I was actually about seventeen, eighteen. But uh, my maths, Dell College, right? Um, Dirk, obviously, cricket's been really intricately involved in your life. Tell us a little bit about the journey. Yeah, it has. Uh, you know, you you talk about sports badges. I guess I'm a cricket badger. Absolutely, you know, it's it's been in my life forever. My my dad played um, some Curry Cup cricket. Uh, he played some provincial stuff. Unfortunately for him, never played international stuff. I was lucky enough to do that. Uh, your stats uh, that you read, they're not overly <laughs> flattering. Um, you know. From my young years, um, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, interesting, you know, with my son who's now 16 years of age and, and uh, pulling my hair out, trying to uh, get him to be better. And not because I force him, but, but mm. just trying to help him because I think I have that ability to help him. And my father, looking back at my career and, and saying to me, well, you were only 15 when you sort of really looked like a cricketer. Mm. So, you know, sometimes it's it's nice to hear those things, but Back in my day, you know, I was a boarding school boy and I'd go home on the weekends. My mates would be off to archipelagos and that kind of stuff. I'd get in the car and go home and I'd, I'd hit cricket and balls. And that was a dangerous place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I used to hit cricket balls Friday, wow. Saturday, Sunday wow. uh, until I had calluses on my hands. Um, sure. And I suppose it was just my life. Um, I, I've sort of got that same thing with my son. You know, he hits cricket balls. I don't force him. A little bit tougher with uh, my wife and my daughter because they don't get it um, <laughs> as a cricket badger. Um, and then stopped um, 2001, um, went back to Zimbabwe Cricket as commercial director in 2010. So I, I handled all the uh, sponsorship and TV rights and that um, for Zimbabwe Cricket. And then left the game a little bit, played a little bit of social, and, and now sort of straight back into it as general manager and, and running all of operations. Well, Dirk is a cricket badger. I'm a rugby badger. Um, how important is it to get your kids in that in that sphere? You know, I talk I talk about my five and three and a half year old sons already going to rugby training. How important is that to start start giving them the direction of what they need and the basic uh, skills that they need? So direction that they need, I, I think being active is important. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've been trying to find out. So my, my example that I use is New Zealand sport. Mm. Um, New Zealand has a population of four and a half million people. Zimbabwe has 16 million people. Why is New Zealand so successful at sport? And I guess the obvious ones are rugby, the yeah. All Blacks, but their cricket structures, they are, top three consistently in all formats, T20, wow. Wow. Uh, 50 over test cricket. And when you have a population of four and a half million people, why? Um, and th the difference is that they have out of four and a half million people, three million mm. active sports people. Wow. And that is, you know, your son who who's a rugby kid going down to the local club and learning tag rugby and learning yeah. to catch and pass. And, yeah. and all of a sudden, Dan Carter walks in and, and he has that icon. You go home and you sit and you watch sport um, and you watch. So when he gets a little bit older, it's it's not about driving him in the right direction. It's just him growing that passion. And I, wow. and I think sport has changed. Um, sport has changed to now more of a business. Um, my 16-year-old son, I, 
I pull my hair out because I'm like, so what are you going to do? He's like, oh, I'll just play in the T10 leagues around the world and make lots of money. <laughs> well, then you, Cole. Yeah. Good work. And, yeah. and in, our, in our days, it was about, you know, the love of the sport. Yeah. Um, and I look at sport in Zimbabwe. Uh, it's sad because we are lucky as Zimbabwe cricket because we get an annual grant from our sort of governing body, which is the ICC, and the other sports really struggle. Rugby is in a great position from a passion perspective because mm. there's people that are still playing and they play only for the love of the game. Cricket, you don't find that. Yeah. And, and I fear that, you know, in time that's going to run away. That world cricket is struggling to find relevance at the moment at international level because you can. You can potentially earn more money going and playing IPL, T20 leagues, T10 leagues around Absolutely. the world. Yeah. Um, and you're slowly getting to the football scenario where... Uh, a Sadio Mane would rather keep himself fit to play for Liverpool as opposed to going and playing for Senegal where he might get injured yeah. uh, and then lose his contract Absolutely. because Senegal can't pay him that amount of money. So it's quite a tough one where sport is going and how we manage that. Um, if you can retain the passion, I think you can do anything because the training, whether it's training you and I tying our shoelaces or training a kid to learn to catch and pass or learn to his grip or, or bowl with his mm. fingers behind the seam. That's something you can teach. And the passion you can't teach. Absolutely. Well, talking about New Zealand, I spent four years there. Uh, I was coaching a under 10 side, I think it was, at one of the local clubs. Uh, Anton Oliver and Byron Keller, who were playing for, who were in that club, but obviously All Blacks um, came back and just did a little coaching session. They just popped in there and did a coach. Now that is why New Zealand is as great as they are, to yeah. be totally honest. Okay. Right. Then thrusted into the GM of Zimbabwe cricket. Uh, what is that role? Just ex define that role. So it's basically running all of operations. Um, so my, my immediate, uh, that I'm responsible for is, um, all the grounds. So all the ground staff, uh, in essence report to me, all the umpires, all the scorers. Um, I run all of domestic cricket. Um, I run the FTP, which is the future tour program that puts together our international structures and where we're going and, and who we hosting. Uh, sure. that's all got to wow. be budgeted. Um, and then, um, I guess running those budgets, I'm responsible to ensure that Zimbabwe cricket operate within its means mm -hmm. to make sure they can fulfill those. Um, I'm in charge of all school cricket. Um, I don't <laughs> normally dress up for a lot of people. Robbie, You're looking smart but today. I'm, I'm actually heading off to a, a junior school's AGM. Um, they've asked me to come and talk about where Zimbabwe cricket's going. Schools cricket's tough. Mm. You know, um, I don't know if I've got the answer yet. Uh, and that's quite sad because yeah. that's our base. Um, and I want to get it right, um, but it's, it's not as easy as that just going and going, oh, let's do that. Because we fit under a different kind of um, structure that schools do what they need to do. And how do we position ourselves as Zimbabwe cricket to assist that and make it better? So it's it's pillar to post all the time. Uh, the good news is you might hear it first here. I know there's a bit on social media, but working at the moment with the ECB, uh, Zimbabwe cricket will tour there for a test match in 2025. Oh, wow. Lovely. So even what we're doing in 2025, I'm working with the ECB. I was actually on a Zoom call with them yesterday on setting out those logistics, where we're going to play, you know, how long we're going to be there, when do we fly in. That's all my responsibility. Wow. Busy, busy man is Dirk uh, Fillion. Uh, Dirk, World Cup is here now. Uh, we had a little brief chat a little bit earlier and uh, you were just saying that when you change the mindset of a player and you get the buy-in of that player, um, just tell us what you've done differently now that's, that's taken these boys to where they are performing. Two out of two, got a big game uh, obviously happening. That's going to be coming through. Um, tell us, tell us what the, your secret has been. So, I, you know, just to clear up, I, I'm not so sure my secret. I, I think um, a collective buy-in from Zimbabwe cricket and more importantly, a selective buy-in from uh, the players. Um, you know, it sounds bad, but it's not intended to sound bad. Is You know, we've gone and said, right, for us to qualify, this World Cup qualifier is brutal. Mm -hmm. um, to qualify is you almost have to win every single game. <clears throat> and that's really tough. And there's an outside chance Zimbabwe might not qualify. Yeah, It's not the end of the world, but... It's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and we sort of made the decision to say uh, it went back about two months ago where we felt that maybe after the West Indies tour, the players weren't as fit as they were. The bowlers were getting a bit of niggles. Um, part of fitness means mental fitness. Yeah. You know, if you're mentally strong and you're mentally or you're physically fit, you'll be 
mentally fit. Absolutely. You think clearer, you know, batting in the middle, you, you can work a little bit harder. So we made a decision, one, to put them through um, quite an intense six-week fitness program. Unfortunately, we didn't have the time, but we, we used the time we had. Um, we invested in them and taking them to Kwekwe to go and do a camp as the squad that had been selected. And basically have said, don't give them any excuses. That's what I mean by that doesn't sound bad. Mm. It's ensuring we give them what they need for them to be ready. Um, with my time now in Zimbabwe cricket and, and even when I wasn't involved as an employee, but I've been commentating and whatever, I've never seen a Zimbabwe team where they are now. Um, they, they are fired yes, up. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. They, they fit. Um, you can see that they're mentally fit. I've actually just come from the ground as they prepare for tomorrow's game. You can see in their demeanor that they're relaxed and, mm. and they, they believe that they deserve to be there. So for us is to make sure that, and my job is to make sure that the national team who, who are my problem, that they're, yeah. they're my responsibility in ensuring that they have the tools that they need. That's part of my portfolio. Uh, we've tried to make it that, not horribly that you can't have any excuses, but give them what they need because where they are now, we want to get to the end of the qualifier regardless if we qualify or not and say, that's the best we've ever been prepared. Absolutely. Um, well, and and I, I am, I'm excited. I, I spoke to some of the players tomorrow. I'm nervous for the West Indies yeah. game because West Indies are a really good side, but you don't know who's going to turn up. They can be hot and cold. And the players are like, bring them on. Well, well, it's all about preparation. By the time you do watch this, we will be in the Super 6, Dirk. Yeah. <laughs> it will be in the Super 6. Okay, so so it goes into the Super 6, and then obviously then the final uh, is played within... How does that work? So first and foremost, the, the round-robin stage, which we're in now, um, only three teams will go through. You will only take the points from the two teams that went with you. So Ooh, any team tight. can only take four. So you could qualify for the Super Six, so Ireland's currently in that position. They've they've lost two games. They could win their other games against the lesser teams and actually still go through to the Super Six with zero. Wow, so wow, wow. I'm, I'm thinking that Group A will be West Indies, Zimbabwe, Netherlands. We've beaten Netherlands, which means we go into the Super Six with two points. If we beat West Indies, we go in with four points. West Indies will go in with two, and Netherlands will go in with zero. We then have to play the other three from the other pool, but qualified. Gotcha. <clears throat> if you lose all those three, you will stay on f four points. Gotcha. We have to back the fact that we will beat potentially Scotland and Oman. Sri Lanka will be tough. They're, they're a good side. Um, and it's just the two teams that go to the final. There's, there's no... There's, there is a value Man. in the final because the team that wins the final will uh, be ranked differently at the World Cup in October in India. But the reality is if you are the two top in the pool of the Super 6 you're going to the World Cup. And we all know that uh, getting into that World Cup changes the ball game completely uh, yeah, from a massive financial point as well. Um, just also checking out, there's some hot news as well that's coming out. Dirk's going to give it to us. T20, uh, sorry, T10 is going to be uh, happening soon in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's hectic. So we're working on that already because we've got a 10-day turnaround. Uh, the World Cup qualifier finishes on the 9th, so that's a Sunday. And on the 19th of July, so 10 days later, we will host a T10 tournament, international T10. Uh, the Lahore Kalandas, who won the Pakistan Super League, they're coming. Um, sure. And there is international players. Uh, Owen Morgan from ex-England captain. Wow. He's coming wow, for wow. that. Martin Guptil from New Zealand. And as we sort of get close to the tournament, we will reveal some more names. Um, but it's big. It will put that is some, huge. It will put Zimbabwe on the map. It will become a... Um, an annual event. Um, so we're working on that already um, to try and be ready for that. Um, and, and we think we can do it. You know, mm. it's non negotiable when I say we think we can do it. We yeah. have to do it. So we come straight out of this World Cup qualifier and then we go into this T10 tournament. Great. You know, we'll have, uh, dare I say, lights by then. The so back, big, so, big lights coming up. So <laughs> three, three, day, three games a day. Uh, each game's an hour and a half. Uh, first mm. game at three o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock. Um, and I think it will be a great spectacle. How good has the support been? I mean, we know that that place gets filled out every single time. Uh, it's actually a concern that it's like there's not enough space for you guys because the guys are just coming in uh, flat out. I think that uh, with everything that's happening, Zimbabwe cricket is on the right road and trajectory. Um, you, Zimbabwe's created incredible coaches. Uh, Dirk, 
obviously one step side straight away, Andy Flower. I mean, they've really represented Zimbabwe in an incredible way. I mean, you played with those guys, came through the system. Um, wh when do you decide that from a coach to a, uh, sorry, from a player to a coach? So I How don't do know. I, I, I think that, you know, I don't know if I could have coached at that level. You know, I, I, I don't think that because you were a great player makes you a great coach. Mm. Um, I mean, there's some coaches around the world that are great coaches that weren't great cricketers themselves. I, I think key is, um, you know, a trait that my mum and father always taught me is empathy. Yeah. You know, if you have empathy for people and understand uh, what they're about, um, that makes it easier for me to deal with you. Yeah. Because I, you know, just because I don't like it, doesn't mean that that's right. And it's something that I'm learning at Zimbabwe Cricket. I believe I have great ideas, um, but because they're my ideas, it doesn't mean they're right. No. Uh, empathy allows you to understand people better. So I think that's a very important uh, trait to have as, as a coach. I think as well realizing that, and maybe in the old days, um, in our days, is that coaches and managers painted everyone with the same brush because the assumption was um, but that everyone has to be the same and they fit in a box. And, and modern society tells you about ADHD, yeah. you know, that uh, you're a naughty kid, beat him until mm. he falls into line. Um, you know, and, and I think that characters have to be dealt with differently. Yeah, How do I brilliant. get the best out of him brilliant. to fulfill what I need for my team or for my nation? So I think that's a very important trait. Um, and the very fine line, you know, the talk is, I spoke to Andy Flower the other day and I said to him, what's the difference between the head coach and then your assistant coaches? So your bowling coach, your batting coach, uh, maybe your fielding coach. And he says, your head coach is the father. He's the father oh, there we of go. the house. There we go. And he's the guy who is more the disciplinarian to the extent that he could potentially ruin or make your career. Wow. But that's what wow, he wow, is. Wow, wow. The assistant coaches are more the motherly figure. You yes. know, a batting coach knows that dad's had a go at you, uh, happens in my household, <laughs> and five minutes later, mum sneaks into the bedroom and, no. and it's a little bit of love. A little bit of good cop, bad Correct. cop. <laughs> exactly. And, and he uh, said to me, that's the secret. If you have a, a good father in a household and you have a good mother in a household, and if you relate that to a head coach and then assistant coaches, you can be very powerful. He's changed a lot, I think. When he first took on the Ashes, I think he was very direct and my way or the highway. He was very successful. Uh, I think arguably the most successful Ashes coach in history. Sure, um, but yeah. he's, he's softened up a bit. You yeah. know, I think he's relying more on making sure I have a good support structure um, than me having to do all the work. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Dirk, also just obviously your support structure at home, uh, Karen and, uh, and your kids, um, it, it, they certainly do give you that structure. And obviously, I mean, you're so busy, you're running around. Um, it takes a lot for, for a family to support someone that is in sport or, or running around like that. Um, just a little thank you or what you want to say to your family? Yeah, they've been great. My, my wife's been fantastic. I mean, she's supported me. I, I think sometimes she just doesn't get it. Mm. Um, and that's okay. You know, it's not about having, I think that's what makes a great marriage or a great relationship. It goes back again to empathy. Absolutely. I'm trying to teach my kids empathy. It's a lot harder than I thought it is. <laughs> um, but, but she gets it. She gets that for me, this is not my job. This is what I do. Yes. Cricket, cricket's in my blood. I'm it's your a blood. badger. Um, I try and find the balance in making sure I'm not very good at it all the time, but she toes the line and, and she's really good for our family. She sort of keeps it together and, and you know, where my kids are is thanks mainly to her. You yeah, know, she, yeah. she's had them together and, and she keeps them together and she disciplines them. Uh, not that I'm never there, um, <laughs> but if you've got that good support structure, oh, it's, you know, you, it makes you a big can difference. achieve anything. Absolutely. Well, I've got to say thank you very much for what you guys have done for us over the last, since I think we got back in December and it's obviously just been a building, building phase for us and thank you to you and your family. Um, finally, what legacy does Dirk Fillion want to leave um, Zimbabwe cricket and Zimbabwe? What is the legacy that it's, you want to... It's a hard one, you know, because I've thought about that often. You know, what legacy do I want to leave? It's quite interesting, you know, talking to my son, he finishes school next year and he came to me and he was like, Dad, I, I want to leave a legacy at school before I leave. And, you know, I, I haven't been able to answer him. I, I think from a Zimbabwe cricket perspective, I... I want to ensure that we continue moving in the right direction. Don't get me wrong. I, I think that the current administration of where we are have done a fantastic job. Yeah. And it's made it very easy for me to step in and, and try and add more value 
to what they've got. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> guess for me is to ensure that any, and I think it's too late for my son because next year he finishes, but a current 14 year old that as he gets closer to sort of 17, which will be our year when we start looking at kids for the under 19 World Cup, they start coming into the system, is that we leave a legacy that they had the opportunity that I got to have. Yeah. You know, I got to represent my country. Um, not every person will have that mm. uh, um, great opportunity. Um, I was lucky to have yeah. that. And if we're making sure as Zimbabwe cricket that we have that pathway, that a kid when he turns 17 can enter into a structure and, and have the ability Brilliant. that he doesn't want to run to England or South Africa or whatever, uh, then I think that we've done our job. We Absolutely. can't control what happens on the field, unfortunately. What we can do, like I said to you, for this World Cup cricket, you know, boys are fired up. We've given them the tools that they need in the same way. we. I want to leave a legacy that I played a part in ensuring that any kid that came through the system had an opportunity that if he wanted to play for Zimbabwe cricket, it was there. And those were the building stones, under 17s, under 19s, under 25s, provincial, and then... Um, our sort of regionals and then into an opportunity to play for his country. Brilliant. And I think if we can do that, yep. then a lot of it we've done. Well, ladies and gents, that's uh, Dirk Falun, the gem of Zimbabwe cricket. I certainly think his legacy is going to be absolutely pinnacle. Uh, he's got a brilliant team around him, but uh, he's certainly leading that by the front and the leadership skills and, and what he's pushing out there for Zimbabwe as a nation, uh, I think is exemplary. So, Dirk, thank you once again. Thanks, thank you so much. Guys, remember, you need to make sure that you do follow Zimbabwe Cricket. Make sure that uh, the T10 that's coming up, we're going to fill those stadiums. We're going to show people really about the Zimbabwe Ghes. And uh, that's, that's the one thing. Um, from my side, we're going to catch you next week uh, on the RDR Celebrity Show. Make sure that you follow us on all our socials, the RDR Celebrity Show, powered by Solution Center. Cheers from me. The RDR Celebrity Show with Robbie Durant. Every week, interviewing local, national, and international celebrities. Proudly powered by Solution Center.